What's up guys, Frank Macaluso here from Garageaholic giving you the second episode of the E31 S85 V10 Revival of the Revival series. Today we're going to be doing nothing but exhaust and that includes making the manifolds, making the primaries and going right into the collectors. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using the ICE Engine Works kit to do it. That's right guys, this is the ICE Engine Works kit. What we're using are the blue, the blue blocks, and these blue blocks are essentially one and five eighths outer diameter, which works with one and five eighths uh, tubing. And we have gotten an, an entire professional kit, which is a 240 piece kit, 60 pieces each. And each of these is straight. We've got a two inch radius, as you can see here. There's a two inch radius on these, these are a three inch radius, and these are a four inch radius. And that plays very well with the tubes that we're gonna be buying from JMD Tubing. Um, and I'll, the, the link is down in the description so you guys can see how to purchase these. We're gonna be using stainless steel 16 gauge tubings for our primaries, and we're gonna be using these, which each of these have a one inch center line distance. So whether it's a two inch piece, or a one inch or, or a, uh, a two inch radius or a four inch radius, they're all going to interlock with each other to create a dummy tube for us in order to create our primaries. So in order to make these five into one primaries, it's not going to be an easy task. And the reason that I'm doing this, and I'm not buying some off the shelf um, aftermarket set of S85 headers, is because of the location of the steering rack. On the factory headers, it will interfere directly with the steering rack that I have positioned here, so that is a complete no-go for me. Now I have to actually create my own. And what I did was I created the flanges from the arc droid and cut that at a quarter inch stainless steel. I also used the one and five eighths primary steel that I bought from JMD, JMD tubes, and I welded the, 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 the start of the tube in there just to get the flanges set. And these flanges are literally going to end up getting installed like that on all of these outlets. I've already got one installed here. And one of the really cool things about the ICE Engine Works kit is it comes with these little rubber expanding grommets. And what they do is they fit right inside of the one and five eighths tubing that we have here. And they have all the, these different sizes depending on your, your own application. And then that, what that does is it adapts it to the blue block. In this case, we're gonna be going with, with, a, with as quick of a turn as we possibly can here, and that's gonna go right like that. So we can turn it up or down, and when we have that spot that we like, we just start turning, and it, and it literally expands into the place that we want it to finally live. And we can actually probably turn it a little bit here if we really want to. So now this is kind of where I want it to be, right? And all you need to do is kind of like a Lego building blocks is you just connect the next one to it. And the way that these blocks are designed, it's actually pretty cool, is that they, they have like little detents that find its center so that you know that when, you, when the detent clicks onto another one, hey, give me a couple of those, Dan. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I don't know if you can see this here, right? Right? These arrows here actually click in with, an, with the other arrows. So when you line up those arrows, these are straight pieces, so there's really no consequence to having them different because it's just a straight tube anyway. But when you have a, a center line radius of, a, of a, a tube bend and you want to minimize the number of welds that you do, you want to line up all those arrows or else you're gonna have a weld at every time you have a misalignment. And you don't wanna have a weld at every pie cut, that's gonna be incredibly um, daunting. So you wanna minimize that. So the, this allows you to best engineer your turns and your straights to go from A to B with minimizing the number of welds. And you also can figure out how many welds you'll, you'll have to do at the end of the day. If it takes you 15 minutes to do one weld, well, if you have 12 welds, well, it's going to take you, you know, 156 times or whatever that number is. So it's going to take as long as you think it's going to take based on your estimate. And that's so much better and cheaper than having to do it out of steel because if you mess up or it's too short, you lose that piece. This 
allows you to go through the entire setup methodically on all five cylinders to get to the collector before you have to cut any pieces of steel. Now, as you can see, we're really taking our time here with this. And the reason being is because what you need to do ideally is to take that one that's furthest away and get it to the collector with the minimal amount of pieces so that this one here also needs to have that same number of pieces in order to hit the collector in order to have equal length headers. That's kind of the way it works. So this one on the very front is actually defining the full length. So we're trying to figure out the best way to route that and avoid any potential maintenance issue like the inability to reach screws or bolts, um, the motor mount bracket, the steering rack, you know, interfering with the column or the scavenger pump right down here that's going to be installed. So all that type of stuff needs to be taken into account. So I think we've gotten cylinder one set up, which is really going to set the pace for the other five cylinders because the length of, this, of that cylinder is what's dictating the other four cylinders and its length to make them equal length headers. Now, if you look at this, these are all equal length headers. I actually measured from here around down and right to the entrance of the collector. And this is 24 inches. So 24 inches to get to the collector, not so bad. Was I able to achieve it? here in this setup. Now, like I said, each one of these blocks represents one inch. So going around, got one, two, three, 24, 25. I got 25 blocks here. And if you zoom in really quick on this, you'll see that I am very, very close. And it doesn't have to be perfect, right? But it, this is basically gonna represent where this is going to end up living in relation to that. So we've got all five of our primaries completely mocked up. And the way that we've designed it was that four of them are actually going behind the steering rack. In this case, we have one that's actually going in front. We absolutely could not find a way to get this cylinder three to be located behind. Now that might make for a maintenance concern for some of you guys who are looking at this off the cuff and being like, how are you ever gonna be able to remove the steering rack? You have to drop at least one of these headers in order to do that. And that's right, you're gonna to need to basically disconnect this and slip it out of the collector and then the whole thing should come out and then you should be able to remove the rack as normal. So it's really not gonna be that much of a, uh, of a problem to remove the actual rack with this in the way. So having said that, we've got a lot of two inch bend radius tubes. We've got some three and some four and a lot of straights. And we're gonna be taking our tubings, I'll show you that in a second, and the tubings are gonna be what actually is going to be <clears throat> Um, we're going to be taking this Lego type tubing setup and going to actual tubes um, using a, a jig that I'm going to uh, design myself. So let's take a look at that. So here are my tubings and I got these all from JMD Tubes, link down in the description. I have all 1 and 5 eighths tubing, mandrel bent, stainless steel 16 gauge, which is basically 1 16th wall thickness, which is the thicker side. That's what you want. You want the thicker type because this is going to be handling a lot of heat and you need to make sure that it can handle it without warping, without, um, without bending or breaking or cracking. So now it's time to make the jig. And the jig or measuring tool that I'm gonna be using that allows me to ensure that I'm cutting at all of these one inch increments to each of the pieces that I remove from each of the primaries is going to be made here. Now this is actually a one inch piece of a uh, polystyrene type foam that can easily be shaped um, and modified. But you can even use like a piece of steel, but there's a reason why I'm using the foam and that has to do with this, this is actually just a, uh, a 16th inch piece of header material that I use to cut just to make sure that I've got the right types of header flanges. And basically what this thing is gonna do is it's gonna go around the tube and it's going to set where I'm gonna end up making my cuts. So it helps me to make a center line radius on each of these tubes using this jig. And the reason that I'm using the foam is so I can take this and dig it into the foam so it sits in at the correct location and then it doesn't turn on me such that I won't be able to do a straight line and I won't know where to cut. Because if you're not going to be cutting these to the center line radius of each of these tubes, then you're going to end up getting a tube that looks something like this. It's going to cut like this and you have a space on the bottom, it's going to be too tight on the top and it won't even match the bend radius that you have that your, that your um, tubes are actually supposed to be. Let's start with this little subsection here. Okay, so I'll take this off. So this is the first section of tube. And this is actually three pieces. This is a two inch and a straight. 
two, 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 and then it turns because the arrows are no longer lining up and a two and a two. So what I've got here is I've identified that if I wanted to get the first two sections here, which is basically this one here, a curve and a straight, that's this section here. That requires two cuts, one, two. And then the next one is one, two, three, four two-inch bends, which is one, two, three, four. So I have to make another cut here. And then I still need to finish the other two bends, but that's going to require another piece because I only have one bend left here on this piece. So I have to go to a whole other piece in order to make the two bends that I need, which is going to be another two cuts. Instead of it just being these two, actually there were six straights, which is awesome because these are six inch straights by, 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 defi by definition. So these are now in the exact same position as they need to be in order to start welding these guys on so I can make this tube look exactly like it should. So now that I got all the pieces, now it's just a matter of just putting them together and welding. Now it's not gonna look perfect because of the cuts not being completely precise. So you kinda have to solve each of these little problems as they occur. And uh, TIG welding these, I needed almost three hands in order to TIG weld. So I ended up moving over to the MIG welder just to get the tacks down, but it ended up turning out okay. But now that I've got it all tacked up, I'm trying to fit it into the slot here. Um, what I've determined was that I want to actually take this five, five by one collector and move it back maybe a half inch to, a, to an inch actually. And that'll give me a little bit more space to make uh, straights that go into these slip joints. Um, can't go directly from a curve into this because it's not going to have enough meat to meet in the middle here. So the idea here is that we make is like another straight. So this whole thing is just going to be shifted. So everything going into the collector is a little bit more straight and narrow going in. But this is really looking good. There's no interferences. And, uh, and now I can start working on the next tube, which I believe is going to be this guy. This is probably the next easiest one to do. But that just about wraps it up for this video. As you can see, we got our first tube done and now we got to do the other tubes, but that's going to be in the next video, guys. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Don't forget to subscribe.